So this project I've been working on for the past month is finally getting there. So I showed you previously this unit here and I think I also showed you this section as well. Now this is a timer interface, the timer is sitting up just up here and the interface is with that. This section here is a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway and this section here is a keyboard interface. So there's those main three parts to it and they all interface together and inter interact together. It's a complicated thing, mostly about getting the code right. Physically putting it together has not been hard, but getting the code right so it allows for all kinds of weird situations and hiccups and that kind of thing, you know, things that don't go quite to plan. So I have to allow for that and have plenty of redundancy and that sort of stuff. So the first part here is the keyboard interface, which has been the last thing I've actually built because that is going to be a problem. I managed to find these boards here they were expensive, but it's basically a, a USB host to serial adapter. I bought 10 of those and it cost me a full, small fortune. But they work beautifully, so that's fine, I suppose. So anything I type in here will go into this unit here, ESP32, which has got Wi-Fi and a lower module, and also a display. So in this case, if I have to set it up, when you first power it up, you've got to set them up. So I've already got like an event ID set up here. So that's, that's the one I need, 242. So I choose a class and I can actually then scroll over to the other menu there and event ID if I need to change anything. Just using the arrow keys. Once it's done, you push enter and it's you're set, ready to go. Now I'm sitting there waiting for a dog number. So what I've got to do now is put a dog number in and it will then send that data over LoRa. If LoRa falls over and it can't get a connection through LoRa or doesn't get an acknowledgement from LoRa to say it went, then it'll, it'll then switch over to Wi-Fi and try that as a backup. So it's got a redundancy. So, yeah, it has to be redundant. Everything has to be backed up multiple ways. So it's um, that's why it's taking so long to get everything right. But um, So then fall over to Wi-Fi and then try through Wi-Fi and then carry on. And then try LoRa again next time. All right, so that's the way it works. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a dog number, which I know should be there. Actually, I'll put one in which I know isn't there. Well, I think that's not there. So we submit that. And I'll say that that dog's not entered and they can't run in the event. That's why I have catching dogs which aren't supposed to be running that try to run. Because some people will have lapses of judgment or perhaps they think they've entered and actually haven't. You know, it happens. So that will just gives you live feedback at the time. So that actually this is filled in at the ringside when they go into the event. So it makes sure that they are actually entered and it queues them up. I should explain that from the beginning, shouldn't I? This section here is queuing up the dogs. So it's putting them into a queue. Um, which is then handled by the timer interface. So that is obviously communicating through LoRa right now, and that is using this interface here. So it's sending it from this LoRa module to this LoRa module, being handled by CSP32, which is then dumping onto Wi-Fi and communicating with the web server. And I don't even see the text on there; it's probably a bit small, but it's actually updating real time. Okay, so that's those, this is communicating to that, and then communicating to web servers. All right, so it's going onto the internet and back. <laughs> it's pretty good. So if I put in a dog which I know is there, there we go, it's retrieved the name and that confirms it, it actually allows me to change the name, so I wanted to change the name to something else, you know, just gen random characters, it will submit it and update the name in the queue, so it'll be the name it uses in the queue. So if someone changes the handlers, so if a different person is running that dog instead of the original, it will update it to the changed one. So that's that part, that's the queuing section, which is part of the project, which is, I, I've taken me about two days to build this part and get that working nicely. And that brings over to the timer interface. So this is the bit which actually does a lot of the work. This is, again has to be set up, has to have the same event number set for it and that sort of stuff, and the same class select set, because these have to work as a pair. All right? If they don't match, this will queue them to the wrong event, or this won't be able to get the queue from this because they'll be looking at the wrong one. So it has to all match up. Saves the SD card as a backup redundancy. And then it's going to be trying to get the dog queue. There we go. It's found the first dog in the queue. And it should get everything which is in the queue. Now it'll only get dogs which hasn't already been sent. So if it's already been sent a dog, it won't queue it. Um, I'm not sure about that part of it yet. I'm probably going to change that and maybe just do like a an overwrite of the queue. So each time it gets a queue, it'll just replace what's on here with what's on the website. Because um, once the site sent it to it, it doesn't add it again unless I add it to the queue again over here. So that's just the way that works. All right, so there's a dog. Um, you know, it's risk, give it a time. And yeah, that'll do. Let's give it some thoughts and send, send that to the site. 
Now this is currently not on LoRa. I don't have a LoRa module in here. I haven't got one plugged in. So this is falling over onto Wi-Fi. It will try and send it through LoRa. It will fail. And then it will dump it on, on Wi-Fi instead. Obviously it will fail because I don't have a LoRa module plugged in right now. But otherwise it will work. Okay. And if I push that button there it will try and get a new queue. And there's, there's no more dogs in a queue so I might find anything. And there's the past result there. And there's ready for the next one. So if I put another dog number in here. We'll see it update. So if I put in Q026, that's another dog which is in that class. It's in there, right? So if I do this, it will now refresh. Now it's going to take a while because it's checking for law first. It's got two law timeouts and then it tries Wi Fi. It tries law twice just in case there's traffic on the channel or something like that. Okay, and there we go. It's queued it up. So that's all working fine. And if I want to check the previous result, I can go back to the one that's already queued up next, and it's there. So it's all working nicely, so I'm quite happy with that. This does have some little quirks, and it's still not 100% happy with the coding on there. I might rewrite some sections of it, but it's basically working. This is a big project, as I said. It's been complicated trying to get the code to work nicely and, and allow for all sorts of situations and redundancies. Now, if I need to change a class in here as well, I can also push the escape key and reset the class up and change it. If I need to. This has actually got two more buttons which aren't on this prototype panel. The circuit boards that I've ordered and made, I can actually start making these on the proper boards and start assembling a proper unit instead of having all this prototyping stuff laying around. Hope you found it interesting. Subscribe if you want to see more about this project and a bit more if you want to see the code, that sort of stuff. I'll show you some of the code, I won't show all of it. There's like three and a half thousand lines of code almost for this for this piece. I think it's about a thousand lines for this and about six or seven hundred for that, something like that. Plus the website stuff, which I won't show you that anyway. It's fairly straightforward, I suppose, but it's been a big project trying to get it working. So if you want to see more about this stuff in the future, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon. And um, I'll cover it in more detail once I do the boards and I make the boards. I'll do a video on those, showing the board manufacturer. Those are sponsored boards from PCBWay too, so obviously you have to plug them. And then I'll show the working units we're using the new boards once we've got them made. That'd be quite nice, I think. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.